Welcome back to episode three of Bloop the Boosted Beater. I'm Jake with Classic Daily. Today I am Mr. Jake. Um, so we're gonna explain how Motronic works. If you wanna go back one video or if you didn't watch the last video, go back and you can see, you can see all the definitions of the sensors, where they live on the car and how things work. So we're going to draw out, or I am going to, not you, I'm gonna draw out a basic layout of how Motronic works. And then today's video, today's basis for it, it will be troubleshooting if your car doesn't start or if it runs poorly. Okay, so first of all, Mr. Jake, that's me. And then Motronic. One point three. So there's different there's different levels of Motronic. One point three is where it has a check engine light and it works with a fifty five pin connector. That's what is on the M the late M twenties. It's on an M thirty car. It's on so E thirty fours, no E twenty eights, some of the seven series stuff and uh, maybe some other other non BMW cars. So Motronic one point three is what we're basing this around. But really this is this is applies to lots of different fuel injection systems. It's also very relative to the Motronic 1.1 and even M42 Trump Motronic 1.7 and even later, just kind of the layout of the engine is what's, what's different on that, okay? So we have the computer, we have the DME. DME lives in the, the glove box. This is where all the wires come to. This is where everything is talking and the tune is held into that. Everything's happening in, in the, the DME, okay? The DME has a wire that comes out to a check engine light in the dash. That we're gonna call that check engine light. Check engine light turns on with the Motronic. You can do a stomp test and figure out codes. If you don't know what that is, Google it, okay? Um, where you can do some stomp tests and you, it'll flash codes and give you some information. So below the DME, okay, is our crank position sensor. Very, very, very important. The crank position sensor, it lives on the front of the engine. It is a um, VR type sensor where it's reading the teeth on the, on the wheel. So there's this little wheel going around. Okay, and it's got a missing tooth, a really nice wheel there, by the way. Um, it's got a sensor and it's reading the teeth. It tells the, tells the DME how fast the engine is spinning. It also has a missing tooth, so it tells it where it is, okay? There's also a crank angle or a crank, you know, we're gonna just call it a cast crank angle sensor. That is telling us when the engine is on its compression stroke, I believe. This doesn't really do all that much with, with the Motronic 1.3. It changes how the injectors are fired. It's still gonna run fine if that's not plugged in. And on some of the other cars, it doesn't, that, car, that sensor doesn't even exist, okay? So below our crank position sensor, we have a multitude of sensors, okay? We have our AFM, we have our coolant sensor, we have an air temp sensor, we have our oxygen sensor, but we have our TPS. In this case, it's just a switch where it's going to be idle and wide open throttle. Okay, we have those those sensors there. I think what else do we have going on? That's kind of it. AFM. Okay, and then from that, so this is all of our these are all our electronics. This is what's going on. So from 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 that from the DME, then we have. Um, our injectors. And we have two banks of injectors. We have the earlier cars are one, two, three, four, five, six, and the later ones are one, three, five, two, four, six. So in this case, this one is bank one is one, three, and five. And then we have two, four, and six. So it's pulsing these injectors, spraying the fuel into the engine, and it's Give it, letting, letting the thing run. Then we have on the other side, we are gonna have spark. We have a distributor. So we have a distributor with six, this is the dis, with six, six connections to our, our um, spark plugs. And then we have a coil that controls that, okay? The DME is sending a signal to the coil based on the crank position sensor that 
will distribute spark to the proper cylinder in the proper order with the proper timing. A lot of information. Crank position sensor, super important. AFM, super important. Okay, so our injectors, to, for them to actually do their thing, they need fuel. Okay, so this is the back side. This is non-electronic stuff. Okay, let's switch to a different color. Blue. Physical stuff. Okay, so our injectors, they have a fuel rail. They have a fuel rail. And there's six injectors. Three, four, five, six. And they're spraying out fuel into the cylinders. Okay, we have a fuel pressure regulator. FPR. And then we have a fuel pump. We're going to put our pump right here. Pump. Okay, we have fuel lines that come this way. They come then out of the fuel pressure regulator and back to the tank that way. Okay, so fuel pressure regulator is what controls the fuel pressure. It, it actually is like a, it lives at the end of the system and it's just like a, a stopper creating, creating pressure on the other side of it. There's two different types of rails on an, on an M20. Some of them have the feed and the return right at the top, but your, your, your return, this is your return, your return will always be on the other side of the fuel pressure regulator, okay? The regulator is just, it's just a stopper. It's holding it, holding back the pressure. If this wasn't there, the pump would just run and you'd never build any pressure. Think about with a, with a, with a, hose, a hose, you're spraying water, you put your thumb over it and then the hose builds pressure on the back side of it. That's what's going on here. So the pump, the pump is running, the pump is running, making, putting fuel through the rail and then the pressure regulator is what, kind of is a stopper and then it creates um, pressure on the back side of the regulator. On this side of the, of the regulator, there's really no pressure. It's just return back to the fuel tank, okay? The pump, more electronics. The pump has a wire that's controlled by the DME and a relay. Fuel pressure re relay. Oh, we forgot one thing here. Idle valve, idle valve. So the relay is what turns on the fuel pump, which then circulates fuel through the engine to make the thing actually run. How does this relay turn on? The relay turns on by the crank sensor. The crank sensor has to see that the engine's spinning, tells the computer, hey, the engine's spinning, it clicks the relay on, it turns the pump on, circulates fuel. Okay? So looking at this diagram, we can start figuring out if something's not working properly, how to start diagnosing where the, the, the issue is. Okay, also in this relay, there's a, there's a fuse here. This DME also has a fuse, okay? The injectors, which are controlled here, no fuse, all handled by that fuse up there. So then the coil, that coil has, has, has power to the DME, has 12 volts, oops, not 12 plus, 12 volts, like so. so the DME, which is also using the crank position sensor, it fires the coil. The distributor is then spinning around in the right order. Make sure you have the plugs and the plug wires in the right order. Then we'll distribute spark to the right cylinder at the right time. Fuel is being injected over here based on the computer and all of its other things um, to make the car go boom and make noise and not make noise, make the engine run and go forward. The AFM, as in the last video, we, we saw the AFM is the king. That's a crown. The AFM is the king in that it's sending a, a, a voltage back to the, the, the computer, back to the DME, to be able to figure out how much pulse width, how, what's the load of the engine, it's gonna tell it how much, how much, what's the pulse width, how much should it open these injectors on and off, turn them on and off to flow the proper amount of fuel through the rail to make it run. A lot of information. But it's not that complicated when you start looking at it in this, this way and you start thinking backwards through, this, through the system. So when I try to diagnose anything, I try to simplify things extreme. I try to simplify as much as I can. Disconnect sensors, okay? As we saw from that last video, the thing's gonna run with a lot of stuff unplugged. The oxygen sensor, it's not needed. The TPS, it's really not needed. The idle valve, it's probably really not needed. A coolant sensor, it's important, especially when the engine's cold, 
but it doesn't do all that much in the beginning or when it's running to make the thing run. AFM, that's your king. AFM and crank position sensor. Without the crank position sensor, it will not run. The thing won't know. It won't know that it's, that it's cranking or spinning to turn the, the fuel pump relay to turn the fuel pump on. Also, if your fuel pump doesn't work, if it's bad, if, it's, there's, if you have no fuel pressure, that's gonna be an issue too. So again, go back to that last video and, and you'll see it running and us play with things and adjust things, okay? Questions? If you have questions, you need to ask. Oh, you're not, this is stupid. Um, okay, so what are some other things that can cause the, the engine to run poor? So, if let's say, so let's say it runs, the thing runs, but it runs poorly. Vacuum leaks. Bad AFM. If that AFM is bad, if it's getting a signal that's incorrect to it, that can cause problems, okay? Those are things that can have problems. Um, bad C191. C191 lives right here. Connected to these injectors the, underneath the intake manifold, there's a, a connect, round connector that connects together that runs wires for our injectors. It runs wires for our coolant temp sensor. It runs wires for our gauge coolant temp sensor, which again, back in that last video, you'll see which one is which. There's two of them on an M20. So this can get corroded. It, the wires break under the intake manifold where you might only be firing one side of the injectors. It's gonna run, run extremely poorly. And remember I said earlier, so the early cars are one, two, three, the ones are four, five, six, and these are flip-flops. So you only want to run half the engine if there's a wire that's bad or it's corroded or whatever the may, the, may the case be. Um, low fuel pressure. That will cause it to run poorly. The coolant sensor can make it run poorly. That's probably on the lowest on the list. Vacuum leaks, bad AFM. That's our biggest thing. Bad FM, bad C191 or physical problems. Physical problems, which would be the fuel pump isn't running. Fuel relay isn't running. Okay, we're going backwards. Fuel pump isn't, isn't running, could be a bad pump. Fuse could be bad. Relay could be bad. DME isn't turning on. The DME has to turn on from the switch. Um, so this is a simple system. It's not complicated. It's a really old, simple system. And if the thing doesn't run, I'm gonna show you here on the car, how to diagnose what step along this way it fell apart, okay? I think that's it. I think we've covered how Motronic 1.3 works. The pulse width of the injector is figured out by the voltage from the AFM, which is just a flapper door. If the AFM is bad, it's gonna have some dead, you might have some dead spots, you might have some weird, weird fuel injection, you might have some fuel AFR, some fuel wrong, bleh, bleh, some incorrect fuel ratios along the way, but it should run, okay? If the thing doesn't run, if it's a no start, it cranks over, that's one thing. It cranks over, you got a good battery, your starter's working, that's, that's, that's key, it's important. This fuel system, is key. Fuel system, spark, compression. That's all we need. Three things. Okay? And it's got to be in time. So that's a different situation. Okay. So we're going to, so I'm going to, I'm going to start showing you on the car what needs to be done to make it run and diagnose it. So we will start with, through this chart, what's the first thing to do is the DME has to be turned on. The ways to figure that out is, is if the check engine light is on, if you have a car with a check engine light, if you don't have a check engine light, the idle control valve, which again, in the last video we showed you, should be buzzing. You'll feel it hum, okay? That means that the main relay turned everything on. I'll show you where that is here in a moment, okay? Then we need to make sure that the fuel pump is, when you're cranking the engine over, cranking the engine, it tells the fuel pump relay to turn on, turns the fuel pump on. We're gonna show, I'm gonna show you here how to use a voltage, uh, a, a multimeter and actually hook it up to your, your fuel pump and see if it's working, okay? Because any way along the way, along the line here can be a problem why the thing won't run. And then finally, we have to make sure that we have fuel pressure, correct fuel pressure. 
This should run about 40 or PSI. Based on the year of the car, if yours is a 2.7, it's gonna be a little bit lower. This is a three bar regulator on a, on a 2.5. Same stuff applies with a 2.7 or a 325E, just a little bit different stuff. And then we need to make sure that the injectors are actually firing and that our spark is actually sparking and that you have good plugs and good plug wires, okay? All right, so we will start with showing you up here, top level, and we're gonna go right through until the car runs. As you all know, Bloopt, it already runs. I've done all this stuff. I figured this stuff out and things a driver, but we're gonna unplug some things, change some stuff so it doesn't work so I can show you how you'll see a voltage working or not working, okay? So we have our diagram of how the Motronic works as we just explained, and now we're actually gonna go to the car and show you how to diagnose from the top down. So we're, we're simplifying and eliminating things to find out why an M20 or any Motronic car might not start. You, want, you, don't need, you need very few tools for this. Uh, a multimeter really helps. So let me show you how to use a basic multimeter and then we'll dig in again at the top. We'll start at the DME and work our way down through to find out why this thing might not run, okay? So here we have a multimeter. You don't have to have a fancy multimeter, a, a simple multimeter that can do um, DC volts and ohms is a really nice thing. I have a couple of clip leads here that, 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 that helps. And then a simple small screwdriver like this will also help to, for, for you to be able to probe things, um, which I'll explain, okay? My multimeter, we're gonna to go to DC volts. That's gonna be here on any other multimeter that you might have. It's gonna say something that says DC volts. And then the other option we're gonna use is ohms. Ohms are, will help you check a, the continuity of a wire. And on mine, I can use this alert mode where if I touch the two leads together, it'll beep and it will show that the wires are connected. Um, we probably won't use this today. We'll be mostly sticking on DC voltage. DC voltage is going to let us test. Uh, mostly we're looking at the um, fuel pump. Okay. So as we went, go back to our diagram here, as we talked about, our, the, the DME is the king. The DME has to actually be turned on for the, the fuel injection to work. Uh, the DME has to be plugged in. You need to have a battery that's working properly for the DME to work. Um, this, this process of diagnosis that I'm explaining is for a no start, but it does crank, meaning that your battery is working, you turn the key, the car goes rah, 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 but it doesn't go bleh and make sound and go. Um, so it's a no start, but it is a crank. Crank, no start, okay? So first thing you need to do is make sure the computer is on, the DME is on. There's two ways to check that out, it is to see if the check engine light's on. And secondly, the idle control valve which I'll show you here, the idle control valve should hum, okay? So I'm gonna turn the car on, okay? And you see our check engine light is on. So that means that the DME, which is over there, um, mine has a bunch of wires in it because we're doing testing and whatnot, but normally it would live up in the glove box and it wouldn't look like that. That's the DME, it's gotta be plugged in. And the check engine light needs to be on, okay? Secondly, your idle control valve, that's this one, the idle control valve should be humming. If you put your hand on it, you'll hear it kind of buzz a little bit and it's, it's, it should hum. If you unplug this, if you're not unsure if it's working or not, you unplug this and it stops humming, then you know that it's working. But those two things, check engine light on and idle control valve humming, okay? So now if those things are not happening with your car, if your car doesn't have either of those things happening, we need to go back and find out why that's not working. That's the first step. Those have to be working for the thing to run. So what could cause it not to, to work? DME could be not plugged in, DME could be bad, okay? Or the, there's not, it's not getting power some, some way. Ignition switch could be, could be faulty, could be something going on there, or it could be as, as simple as the main relay could be bad, okay? The main, main relay, you have three relays on the driver's side fender, this is the main relay. This is the fuel pump relay. This relay here is the oxygen sensor heater relay, okay? This one and this one are what we're gonna be mostly worried about today. This is your main, main relay. If I unplug this relay, if 
five pin relay. It's a, a special, special relay for, um, for BMW stuff. You can probe some spots in this to see if we, see if we have power, we have, we have switched power. Um, you have to look at a, the, you have to look at the wire, wire diagram to explain that. And that might be a separate video um, on then on then to accept the separate video and different information from today. But an easy thing to try is replace this. If it's, if you're not, if you're not getting it, replace it. Okay. Another reason that the DME doesn't get power is these cars have an OBC and on an onboard, an onboard computer, and there's a code feature in them. And if, that's not connected. If you unhook to the DME or on your, on your wire, wire or anything under, under your dash, unplugged anything under your dash, then check and see if that's unhooked. Okay. So the OBC relay, OBC module, if it's unplugged, you're not going to get power to that, that relay. Okay. Then the power to the relay comes through your C101 connector. This is a C101 connector. It's coming to the fuse box. And then it's also, this end is going back to, to the engine harness. Okay. I have mine peeled back cause I was again, probing stuff and showing things off. There are labels on the connector pin seven, which is, we can dig away with this a little bit. Pin seven is right. I think here. This one, right? That there, that big green one. So if we plug our push this connector in there, we're going to use a clip lead. We're going to clip it to ground somewhere. In this case, I'm going to clip it on here with your multimeter, this connection and your, your clip lead. We're gonna clip those together, okay? So now we have ground to the ground to our multimeter. Now we're gonna check for voltage on that connection. Let's see here. Okay, we have 12 volts. If I turn the car off, nothing. Power back on, 12 volts. If we unplug this relay, we still have 12 volts there because what it's doing is the key is sending power through here, through this, back to the engine harness, and then it's sending it to this, this relay, which then turns the, the computer on. Okay, so if your car, if you got this far and the, the DME is turning on, Look, look back at our, our diagram. DME is on. We're good there. We're not worried about that. Next thing is the crank position sensor has to work to tell the car, tell the engine, tell the DME that it's turning over. Where's the crank position sensor? Let's check that out. My hood is off the car because it makes it easier, but the crank position sensor lives down in this area. Okay. Here. And it is right there. That's a crank position sensor right here. Crane position wire comes up around the front of the motor this way, and you're going to plug in right here. Okay. There's actually two connections here, here and here. One's a crank position sensor. One is the cylinder position sensor. We're not too worried about the cylinder position sensor. The engine will run just fine without it, but the crank position sensor needs to be there. It needs to be good. Um, I highly suggest if you have a, if you have a problem with the crank position sensor, or you think it's a sensor issue that you use a real BMW one or a used one that you know is good. A lot of the aftermarket ones do have problems. Okay. So how do we figure out if the crank position sensor is, is good? The easiest way to find out if it's good is to find out if the fuel pump is running. Okay. Or if at least you're getting 12 volts to the fuel pump because the way it works is the crank position sensor tells our computer, the DME, the engine is spinning. And then as we mentioned, it's going to click this relay, the relay being here, this one, it's going to click that relay. And then it's going to turn the fuel pump on fuel pumps going to run, create fuel pressure, let the car run. So to, to get to it, we need to see if we're getting voltage to the fuel pump 
when it's cranking. Okay? So the best thing is to do is to start back at the fuel pump, which is in the car underneath the rear seat. So we've removed the rear seat. The pump lives under the passenger side rear seat. This panel right here that needs to get removed. There's four screws, one, two, three, four. I've already taken them out. It's just a standard Phillips screwdriver. And then off it comes. Here's our pump, okay? There's two, two wiring connectors to the pump. You have, this is power and ground, and then this, this sensor here is for our gauge in the dash, okay? We're more, mostly concerned about this one right now because what we're trying to do is we're trying to, to verify if the crank position sensor is working. Now, I've, I've disconnected the coil on this car so it's not going to start, so at least we can, we can, I can show you how this works, okay? We're going to unplug it. There's, there's two, power and ground. If you look at this wire here, if you want to know, the brown is going to be ground. The, the other one is going to be power. It really doesn't matter for what we're doing. So you're going to take your multimeter and you're going to insert the probes here and here. I'm going to try to do this with one hand. Okay. There we go. So we're going to insert the probes into here. But you do not want to touch the probes together. We're going to connect them. Okay. And then multimeter. Then I'm going to crank the car over. And we should see 12 volts. Okay, if you notice, it went down to 10. It was about 10 volts because we're cranking. That's the battery voltage. So... What that tells us, what that tells us is that the crank position sensor is working. So in the case of, of my car, we know it runs, the crank position sensor is working because it told the fuel pump to turn on because it knows the engine is spinning. Now, let's hook it back up and we're going to attempt to see if we can hear it. So when you crank, you should hear it buzz. And also when you lift, you'll hear a buzz a little bit too. So if you have voltage here, car doesn't start, and then you can't hear the pump hum, it's going to go when, the, when, when you're cranking, then the, there's a good chance you have a bad pump. More than likely, the pump is bad, and I would suggest replacing the pump, okay? So if the pump... If you don't have 12 volts here, now we have a couple things that we can check. So if you don't have 12 volts at the pump there, it's a couple, there could be a couple problems. You could have a fuse that's blown to the pump. You might have an issue with your fuel pump relay, okay? Or there's a wiring problem going back to the, the tank. So again, we've mentioned the relay is this one. You could try replacing that. The fuel pump also feeds through this connector, okay? It's pin 13, which is this one right here, okay? Again, we can do the same thing. We can probe that one, and we can hook up our meter. So we have ground there. I'm going to clip lead. Now, being that this is 12 volts, this is power, you don't want this to ground out to anything. So be careful that you don't ground it out. We don't want, need a hard short of any sort. Okay. Clip lead, clip lead it on, or clip leaded, clipped onto that. So I'm going to stick it up like so, so it's not touching anything. Okay. Now we're going to look at multimeter. I'm going to crank the car over, and you'll see 12 volts. Okay, so that's telling us that our, our relay is working. We're getting power back through the C101. Now the next thing would be you're checking the, your, your fuse in the fuse box. Uh, the fuse box here, you're gonna check the fuse, okay? If you're still not getting 12 volts,
back to the pump. You're not getting 12 volts here. You've checked this relay, or maybe replaced it. More than likely, the crank position sensor is bad, okay? Now, we can also double check that, we can, you can double check this, this relay. There's, there's, there's ways to, you can jump the relay. We're not gonna get into every little situation because it's, it, it's really is endless. More than likely, the problem is your, your crank position sensor if you have not, if you don't have 12 volts back to the pump at all, okay? If you have questions about that fuel pump relay, send me a message, com comment below, and maybe I'll do a little a short little video just explaining the, the relay and how to test that because that's it is, it's, it's, it's um, interesting nonetheless, okay? So next up, if our fuel pump we have power to the fuel pump and it's, it is running. We've confirmed that the pump is buzzing and humming. Now we need to confirm, and the engine still doesn't run, okay? The next thing would be we need to figure out if we actually have fuel pressure because the pump can run, but the pump, pump might, might be not any good. There's a, there's a little hose inside the, the tank that connects the pump to the, the hanger. That could be bad or blown out or worn out. So you need to check and see if you have, have, have fuel pressure. I have a fuel pressure gauge set up on this car, so I'll show you. The fuel pressure gauge is going in line in the pump in in the 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 feed to the engine. In this case, we have 40 psi, so we have fuel pressure. If you don't have fuel pressure, you check with the gauge. You don't have fuel pressure, then there's a problem with your pump. Okay, replace the pump. You have a blockage with the line, something going on with the, the regulate fuel pressure regulator, something like that. Again, go back to that diagram that we talked about in the beginning of the video, and that will um, lead you in the right direction, hopefully. Okay, so. Next thing is your fuel pump's running. We have, we have power to the fuel pump, so we know our crank position sensor is good enough to make the thing run. It might still have other issues, but it's good enough to make it run. And then the next thing is we need to find out if we're actually getting fuel out, out of the injectors onto the spark plugs. Because what can happen is your injectors can stick. You can have a problem with the C191, which I'm gonna show you here in a moment, what that looks like and where it lives. And you need to make sure you have fuel on the fuel getting into the cylinders. So I would suggest pulling a spark plug after you crank it, crank it a whole bunch and see if your, your spark plugs are, are wet, okay? Um, again, spark plugs on this, this side of the engine, you just wanna pull one after you crank it for a little bit and see if you it smells like fuel. That's what you're looking for, okay? Now your injectors live down in this area. You have six injectors underneath, right down in there. This, this is the, the the wiring for the, the, that snaps onto the top of the injectors. These are your injectors here, here, all the way along, there's six of them. This black thing here, this is your fuel rail that's, that's going to feed fuel to the, to the injectors. If the car that you're working on has been sitting for a long time, there's a good chance the injectors can stick. They, they gummed up with fuel, and the easiest way to get them to unstick is literally hit them with, the, hit them with a little wrench, smack them with something, um, maybe have someone crank the car over so you're pulsing the injector a little bit and tap on the injector. You should hear them click is what you're looking for. They will make a little clicking sound when they're, when they're cranking over. You can also check and use a Noid light and plug it into your harness. It's a little bit difficult on an M20 because you do have to pull that entire thing off. So um, I'm not gonna show you that in entirely. Okay, so we've confirmed that the crank position sensor is working because the fuel pump is turning on. We have 12 volts of the fuel pump. Your fuel pump is buzzing and working. So. We've confirmed that. We've confirmed that you have fuel pressure based on a fuel gauge, or you can feel the, the, the fuel pressure lines, the actual lines running to the, 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 um, the rail. Feel them with your finger, push on them. They should be extremely hard if there's, there's pressure on the inlet. The outlet, which is on the back side of the regulator, that one is going to be pretty soft because it's just, it's just returned back to the tank. So you've confirmed you have fuel pressure. You could even, you can jump the fuel pressure relay. So that's this connector here. If you connect this wire and this wire together, okay, with a jumper, that pump will run. The, the pump will run and you should hear fuel going through the, the fuel rail, okay? Make sure you have fuel in the tank as well. So if the thing still doesn't run, now we need to get fuel into the cylinders for it to actually start. So that's caused by the injectors. The injectors live, here, okay? So there's an injector, you can see there's six injectors. These have all been clean. Yours will probably be filthy and dirty. This, this, 
wire, this connection right here, okay, this is the wiring to the top of the injectors, and then this part here, this is for the, this is a fuel rail to the feed the injectors. If the car's been sitting a long time, there's a good chance that you might have uh, sticky injectors, some hit on them while you're cranking the motor with a, you know, a wrench, a screwdriver, a pair of bicycle, a pair of needle nose, anything, whatever you have, because you're trying to give them the click. It's a little tiny little solenoid inside that injector and it could just be bad. Another problem that happens really common with, the, with the, the E30s, especially the later cars, because, well, the early cars don't have this, is your, your injection harness, this, this guy right here, which I have one pulled out of stock, this is your, 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 your fuel injection harness, okay? This connector right here, this is called the C191, and if you notice, it's a round connector, okay? That guy, and these get all corroded up because they live down underneath your intake manifold. They live down here, and if you can't see, mine actually has been cut and spliced with a different connector because this car did have a problem with that. Let me move the mic. So again, down here is where that what that, this that connector lives down in that spot. Mine has been spliced at one point in time because it was bad. So if the injectors aren't, aren't, aren't clicking, you're not getting power in the injectors, check. If you're still not getting fuel into the engine, check this, okay? Check this connector. What's an easy way to check if you're getting fuel into the engine? Pull a spark plug. To get pull a spark, crank the engine over a whole bunch, blah, 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 crank it over a whole bunch, and then pull a spark plug, and any, of the, any of the spark plugs out, I'd pull, I'd pull one, like pull one and two, or one and, for some, pull, pull them in two different banks and see if you're getting fuel on the plug, smell them, okay? Again, this is a no start, you're not gonna run at all, okay? So we figured out quite a bit here. The thing still doesn't run, okay? You've tried all this stuff, you fix these things, or maybe it does run, awesome, good job. If it doesn't run, okay, it still doesn't run, there's something else that they can go on, okay? We need to have those, we need to have multiple different things to, to make the, the engine run. As we mentioned, there's those sensors, so you might have a bad, bad, bad a really bad AFM um, that's causing it not, not to start or not to run properly, or you might not be getting spark, okay? So spark is supplied by the coil, coming through a single coil wire, they through here, and that comes into the, the, the distributor cap, okay? As the engine spins around, it's really just a fancy switch where it sends the spark coming off the coil through the distributor cap down each spark plug wire to the corresponding spark plug. So if your coil's bad, that could be a problem. If your wires are on incorrectly, that's a huge problem. Make sure, you're, make, sure make sure, make sure, make sure that those wires are, are in the right order, especially the coil wire, okay? If the coil, was not, not, the coil wire isn't connected, the thing's not gonna start, it's not gonna run, okay? In the case of mine, it is unplugged right now because we were testing it and I wanted to show you how it didn't run. So if this isn't plugged in, simple mistake, guys, connect it up, okay? It should, be, it should connect right on top of the coil. Also make sure that Okay, it should connect on the top of the coil. You hear it snap. Then the co all, all your, your, your plug wires, they're gonna come onto the plug and you should listen and hear them kind of, kind of crimp on there. If they're not crimping on there, you're not making a good, a, a good connection. That's gonna happen either at the coil, the distributor cap, and at any spark plug, okay? If the spark plugs are extremely old, that, 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 can, that can cause a problem. If they're extremely fouled, that can cause a problem. The thing that the, the car probably will start and run, but it's not gonna run properly, okay? So if you've made it this far and the car still doesn't run, I don't know, give up. Uh, or if it doesn't, it still doesn't run, send me a message, guys. I'm, I'm, I'm more than happy to help you, give, give you some suggestions along the way. This is just kind of a good primer to, to show you how diagnosis works. I really try to simplify things, really, get to the small little bits and break it apart because it's really not that complicated when you, you get to the little bits and the pieces of it, okay? So as we show, talked about before with our, our diagram here, if the thing doesn't run, this is what you need to look at and all the stuff that I just explained. If it runs poorly, there's, there's this, 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 this about area here is gonna be the, the main parts of what's, what the problem is, okay? It's, you have a vacuum leak where you have this, this boot is ripped your vacuum leaks all 
all in, in the, the throttle body area if it runs poorly. Okay, so check, check this for, for vacuum leaks. The AFM, as we said, is, is key. If the AFM is not metering the correct air, it's not going to supply the correct pulse width back to the injector to be able to supply the correct fueling to the car. Okay, that's all it is. And if you want to look back at video two that we shot before, that one will show you how all this stuff is actually working and it's going to increase your knowledge for diagnosing your car if it's not running properly. Okay, so vacuum leaks, uh, what else can happen? Bad AFM, really important. Uh, bad C191, which I just explained, that's, that's the, the harness that lives under, under, under the, the, thro the intake manifold. Low fuel pressure, extremely low fuel pressure, it's not gonna run, or it's gonna run poorly, like 10 PSI or 20 PSI, it's, not, it's gonna run really, really poorly. That's gonna be caused by a fuel pump issue or a blockage in the fuel line coming up to it, it's, or a problem with your actual regulator in, in the car, okay? Coolant sensor, that can make the thing run poorly, especially on a cold start. Once it's warmed up, it can kind of work with, work with it. And once it goes in a closed loop with the oxygen sensor, it's gonna work fine. So it's not gonna cause a no start, okay? It might cause a very hard cold start is what I would see, okay? Bad TPS, it's gonna run fine. It's gonna, idle, idle might be a little bit high, wide open throttle might not run, not, might, might not make the same amount of power, it's still gonna run, okay? So, I think we've covered just about everything with diagnosing Motronic and figuring out how Motronic works. What I figured out is Motronic works really well on, on a stock car. If you're gonna modify the thing, this is not the, the, the correct platform. If your M20 and your, your 325 E30 is something you're just driving, awesome. It's a great car, they're, they're, they're fun. Leave them as they are stock and just rip it around. But if you're gonna modify it, which we're gonna do, that's right, this thing's getting a turbo and it's gonna get all sorts of information that we'll share to you with turbocharge. So you can tune the stock chip, blah, 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 blah. We're not messing, we're not going down that, 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 that path. It's 2023 and there's, there's avenues out there that are much, much better. So in the next video, we're gonna be installing our new plug and play setup, which comes with everything you need. It's got the, the ECU, it comes with a TPS adapter, it comes with a correct TPS, it comes with a, a AFM delete plate, it comes with everything. All you gotta do is hook it up and tune it. And we're gonna help with that too. You'll come with some, some base, base tunes and there'll be some upgrades that we're gonna explain in the next video and some other options that'll make it even cooler, okay? So again, tune in next week. Uh, watch the description on the bottom for the day, time. And if you wanna follow along with us on the premiere, that would, that'd be awesome. We'll answer all your questions as we go through and install that on this car. So remember everybody, um, next time you make a great sandwich, toast the bread, just a little bit extra. I'm Jay from Class of Daily, hang in there.